Terry Hill will play a great deal at the other running back. Ron Fellows is the deep threat at flanker. Ken Blair also catches the ball from the split in position as Bradley spreads it around pretty well in the passing game. Missouri operates out of severe offense, but unlike some Veer teams, they do employ a great deal of drop back passing. And on first down, this is Wilder, who was the most valuable player in Missouri's Liberty Bowl win here over LSU two years ago. He gets off to a good start with a six-yard pickup. Along the offensive line, Wayne Washington at a tackle. Next to him, Kevin Sadler at guard. Brad Edelman, an all-big eight center in the heart of the offensive line, along with this man, Stan Lechner, and especially the man next to him, Howard Richards, an outstanding tackle. Andy Gibbler is an outstanding sophomore tight end who has 26 catches on the year. Second down, three yards to go. The give again to Wilder, and Wilder running behind Richards is knocked down by James Looney, the leading tackler for Purdue. He's close to a first down. Defensive line and linebackers for Purdue, they'll be shuffling a pretty good deal on defense. Calvin Clark is the outstanding man along the defensive front where Purdue has had some problems. The part of the defense are the two middle or inside linebackers, Looney and Mark, and they're proud of this defensive backfield, Kay, Sennett, McKinney, and Williams. The two safeties, especially McKinney and Sennett, excellent, experienced football players. Wilder had enough for a first down on his second carry, so now it is Missouri first down to the And now Phil Bradley, moving down the line of scrimmage on the option play, is knocked down by Matt Hernandez, number 71. Hernandez getting a start along the defensive line for Purdue as the Boilermakers shuffle in an attempt to shore up the middle against the strong Missouri running attack. These two teams have played each other seven times, but not since 1956 when Len Dawson led Purdue to a 16-7 win over the Tigers. On second and ten, Bradley throws over his split end Ken Blair. Blair was into Purdue territory at the 40-yard line, and as he goes down along the bench, there's a momentary feeling of anguish among Missouri fans, and now Blair gets up and he's okay. He was knocked out of bounds by Tim Sennett. The ball was overthrown of Blair, and he got a 34 and went into the bench. And a little bit of an anxious moment, probably for Warren Power. That was McKinney, the three safety, number two tackler on Purdue's team with tackles on the year. Guy who likes to hit in the three safety position. Now third down 10 for Bradley. He throws it out to Wilder, who's very dangerous on the flare pass out of the backfield, but this time he's dropped on an excellent open field tackle by Tim Sennett, the strong safety, and that will set up a putting situation for Mizzou. Perfect day for football. Temperature 47 degrees, wind variable up to five miles per hour, but for a passing quarterback like Mark Herman and another one who likes to throw the ball like Phil Bradley, you couldn't have a better day. Deep to kick it for Missouri is Jeff Brockhouse, number three, and back to receive for Purdue, Bill Kay and Scott Craig, 38 and 45. This is Craig at the 20. He's dropped as he gets out to the 22-yard line, and Mark Herman and the Boilermakers will start their first offensive position from there. This is Herman, the senior from Carmel, Indiana who has been the heart of the Purdue program for four years. Starting tailback is Ben McCall. He'll be replaced later by Jimmy Smith. John Macon, the fullback. Steve Bryant, one of three outstanding receivers. Here's another one, Bart Burrell. Both split receivers have caught over 40 balls for Purdue. And the tight end, Dave Young, whom you'll see in a minute, is the nation's leading receiver. Setbacks are McCall and Macon behind Herman. This is Mike Huter in the game and replaces as McCall takes the football and gets across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. Here's the offensive line, very pass-blocking oriented. Violet tackle, Tim Hall at left guard. The co-captain, Pete Quinn, is the center. Ray Gunner will be the starter at right guard. And the outstanding blocker along the front is this man, a sophomore tackle from Maryville, Indiana, named Tom Gillespie. There is the nation's leading receiver, Dave Young, the tight end with 67 catches on the year. He will often wind up you will often be lined up flex or wide, not as a tight end, but a third wide receiver. Herman wants to throw on second down, and he is the man who got in there, number 
66. The middle guard, Jerome Sally of Missouri, and that is the primary concern for Purdue's offensive coaches approaching the day. Can they keep the Missouri defensive line out of there? There's from Sally, number 56. He takes on a double-team block. He comes out of the back side of the shot. Now he'll come to the right. There he is, and makes Mark Herman. Mark Herman, everything was covered underneath. He saw the pressure and sensed it and got tackled. So now they need to get the football to the 32-yard line for a first down. It is third and 16. And Missouri goes to five defensive backs. They will use as many as six on occasion during the game. Draw play. Number 37 is John Macon, the fullback. And Macon has a little bit of breathing room for the Purdue putter as he gets it out to the 23-yard line. But it'll be fourth and long in a kicking situation from there as Johnny Poe made the tackle in the open field for Missouri. Now Jim Boucher, a sophomore from Evansville, Indiana, will come on to kick for Purdue. And Johnny Poe, number nine, Bill Whitaker, number 30, a pair of defensive backs deep to receive for Missouri. Missouri should gather some field position out of this, but it's a heck of a kick by Boucher, all the way back to the 34-yard line. And number 30 is Bill Whitaker, who gets away from two men and then is dropped at about the 32-yard line. So Missouri gains only a slight field position at the football at their 32-yard line, ready to begin their second possession of the game in the backfield with Phil Bradley. Terry Hill, number 22, is one set back. The other is James Wilder, number 32, the all-time leading Missouri rusher. This is Hill fumbling. Wilder fumbling the football, and Purdue has it. Number 71, Matt Hernandez. Sophomore from Detroit, Michigan, who made a big play in the first series, comes up with the recovery on the mishandled ball. It's a quick sweep to a Wilder, number 32. He really never put the ball away. It drops loose. Hernandez falls on it. Missouri offensively has only turned the ball over 23 times. They have been very successful and very uh, protective of the football, and now they've turned it over. So Mark Herman and the Boilermakers get a chance from the 34-yard line. And Herman throws to Dave Young. Backer was there to help drag him down. Here's Dave Young. This is his favorite route, the crossing route across the middle behind the linebackers. He's big and strong and a good target. Mark is like to throw him. He'll even throw times when he's only one yard deep and tries to make him uh, make all the yardage. That time, significant game. A first down at the 13. Ray Stevens, the defensive end, helped Darko out with the tackle, but you saw the two defensive backs who were unable to bring Young down. Now they go to the shotgun formation. Three wide receivers to the right. loses the snap and throws wide in the flat, trying to hit Dave Young for a second time. Now it will be second and 10 from the 13-yard line. Purdue with as outstanding a trio of receivers as you will find anywhere in the country. Dave Young, the nation's leader with 67 catches. Bart Burrell, the split end, 58 catches, seventh in the country. And also in the top 30 is the flanker, Steve Bryant, he is the deep threat who is expected to stretch the defense vertically to make holes underneath for Young and Burrow. Second down, Tim, from the 13. And he is close to a first down at the three-yard line. Kevin Potter, number 18, the strong safety made the stop along with Darko. You come in a football game thinking Purdue's going to throw, 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 and all of a sudden it's the delay of the draw play to Macon right up the middle and the secondary back Potter has to make the play, the strong safety. Good head-up tackle by Potter in the open field, and he managed to stop Macon a yard short of a first down. So now Herman must deal with third and one for the running play behind Gillespie on the right side or perhaps a pass to Young. Purdue is a pass-oriented team on short yardage play. They go for the leap over the top with Ben McCall trying to go behind left guard Tim Hull and center Pete Quinn. Darko, number 48, was up there to meet McCall head on. And the officials will call for a measurement. Referee today is Pete Williams, umpire Jack Smalley, line linesman David Scobie, line judge A.C. Lambert Sr., field judge Bill Stanton, back judge Bill T.
measurement has brought Purdue up inches short of a first down. So a decision for Purdue head coach Jim Young. With 8 minutes 34 seconds still to go in the first quarter, fourth down, inches at the Missouri three-and-a-half yard line, and they will go for it. Missouri's defenders don't believe that he has the room. There is Jim Young. Completing his fourth year at Purdue. Linebacker Lester Dickey was the man who jumped up to make the stop for Missouri on Macon's try for first down yardage. So twice they tried to leap the middle, once with McCall, once with Macon. They did not go to the right side behind Gillespie, their strongest blocker. And they came up short. Goal line stand. After the Wilder fumble, Missouri holds. The Tigers will start with the offense at their three. Oh, happy despite the fact that her team has just blown its first scoring opportunity at the ball game. Missouri gives to Wilder. And he goes five yards out to the eight-yard line before number 59, James Looney, the heart of the Purdue defense, stops him. It will be second and five. Purdue operates in a 5-2 defense. One adjustment today, they have moved the defensive tackle Paul Hanna over to replace their nose guard and inserted Matt Hernandez into the ball game. Hernandez is already made two big plays. On second down, Wilder moving behind all big eight tackle Howard Richards on the right side. And stopped by Paul Hanna, number 96, as he gets the football out to the 12-yard line. It will now be third down, about a yard and a half to go for a Missouri first down. And you see the statistic on Wilder indicating that he passed Joe Moore, formerly the Chicago Bears this year, to become the all-time leading rusher for Missouri. Double tight end set. Number 94, who met him head up at the line of scrimmage, is the outstanding defensive lineman for Purdue, Calvin Clark, a senior out of Atlanta, Georgia. And no measurement is necessary. Missouri is short of first down yardage. So Jeff Brockhouse, whose first punt traveled 39 yards, comes on to kick again for the Tigers. One of the things Missouri is trying to take advantage of is the vulnerable spot at the nose guard position. Matt Hernandez is starting there. That's the first game to start at the nose guard position. There are Brockhouse's statistics on the year. Now, standing here playing the football, he used to be the place kicker as well. Kay and Craig are back, and this is Scott Craig calling for a fair catch at the 45-yard line. Mark is back at the 44 after a 43-yard punt by Brockhouse. Purdue will start from there. Coming up at halftime, a special ABC News halftime report involving three elements. Further release of film Christmas messages from some hostages not yet seen previous releases. That film sent via satellite from Iranian TV earlier today. Two reports on the Afghanis of Iran and their attack on the Soviet embassy in Tehran earlier today on the first anniversary of the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. Three, the latest word on continuing to negotiations to release the 52 American hostages. That report at half time today. Stick with Mark Herman on first down. Throws in the flat. Lead to Ben McCall. McCall still in the game at tailback. Has a pickup of five yards out to the 49-yard line before Bill Whitaker, cornerback, knocks him down. Once again, we remind you, a full five-minute halftime report today from Tom Gerald in Washington regarding those dramatic and continuing developments in Iran, and most importantly, footage of more American hostages not yet seen in previous Iranian film releases. Christmas messages to their friends. There are the list of the names of the outstanding quarterbacks who have played at Purdue. You can see that Herman's statistics power over those of the rest. This is McCall. First down yardage into Missouri territory in the 40. The yard line, Van Darko and Kevin Potter made the stop for the Tigers, but Purdue surprisingly effective with the running game. It's a wide sweep. He's got his guard out in front of him. Hall is out in front, makes the block. A little face masking there. 
but they are running the ball, trying to help mix up the offensive attack so that Mark Herman can draw back and throw the football, which is what they really live by. You spotted the face man? Yes. On first down, it is again McCall, and the senior from Chicago, Illinois, is dropped again by Van Darko, but not before he gets across the 35 to the 33-yard line. McCall already four carries for 24 yards in the ball game. A very highly respected senior, his 422 yards on the year. Behind those of the other jailback, Jimmy Smith, he had 654 yards. But McCall gets the start today because of his stature among team members. Second down three. Bacon, the fullback, inside the 30, near the 28-yard line, and that will be another first down for Purdue. Number 91, Tony Green, made the stop for Missouri. Missouri's defense extremely conscious of Mark Herman in the past. They will be going, as I mentioned before, time set eight to five and six defensive backs. Right now, Purdue's effective on the ground. They really are. This time they go inside. Tony Green, number 91, and Justice has to come back and make the tackle. Missouri coming in the football game really felt like their defensive line was superior to Purdue's offensive line. On first down from the 28, Herman wants to throw. And the ball drops the football turn toward the goal line without having gathered the ball in. And that leaves Herman with second and ten. Unusual among college quarterbacks, Mark Herman, by and large, calls his own play. There have been occasions this year, early in the season when he was coming back from the thumb injury which kept him out of the Notre Dame game, and late in the year against Michigan when things simply fell apart for Purdue, when he did not call his own play. But in games in which they've been rolling, particularly during a, during a big six-game winning streak in midseason, Herman calls the play his privilege as a senior and a four-year starter. McCall on second down. Tries to get it to the 25-yard line. Four minutes, 11 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. And we have no score from Memphis. There is Warren Powers, completing his third year as head coach of the Missouri Tigers. A man who had one of the most auspicious head coaching debuts of anyone in history in his very first game as a head coach. He brought Washington State down from Pullman to play his alma mater, Nebraska, in Lincoln, and they sprung a big upset. Herman throws a floater to Dave Young, and Young is inside the tent. Eric Wright, number 21, finally drops Dave Young along with Johnny Poe, but here's another look. This time he gets away from his defender, shuts him inside, then he releases across the middle. This is his favorite route, Dave Young, number 80. Someone, they were in a man underneath, two deep man underneath, and nobody was there. And he makes a big gain, two catches, 38 yards. So far today. He is the big weapon. At the end of most of Herman's passes. Herman throwing. goal line play for the Boilermakers. They jump on top. Another look at Burl. Burl, man on man with Johnny Poe, number nine. He pushes him inside. The ball's in the air. Burl sees the ball, comes back for it. Poe was not conscious of where the ball was, and that's why the touchdown, because it was not a well-thrown pass. Burl just came back and got it. If you follow college football, you probably know the story. Burl and Herman high school teammates from Carmel, Indiana. Now Rick Anderson will try to add the extra point, and Burl goes back to hold in this situation. High snap, but he gets it down. Kick is good. So with three minutes, 31 seconds left in the first quarter, Purdue goes 56 yards on yard. Mark Herman, the Barthes Burl pass. They lead 7-0. This is George Shorthoe. Freshman running back from Missouri, taking the football at the goal line and getting it back to the 19. John Zordani made the tackle. Another look at the touchdown. Watch Mark Herman's touch on the ball. Burrow does not see the ball. Mark throws it up in the air. He goes over the back of Poe, who had really was executing on Burrow's route and did not turn back soon enough because the ball was underthrown. Poe could have knocked it away. Touchdown. It still counts six points. Herman already today, four of six for 50 yards, one touchdown. There are the statistics on the scoring drive. It took two minutes and 47 seconds. A big factor in the drive, Purdue's ability to run the football. And now it is Missouri who runs the football. It's Terry Hill, 180-pound junior 
tailback from East St. Louis, Illinois, gets it across the 25 to the 28-yard line. For Tim Sinnott, the strong safety made the stop for Purdue. Missouri really felt like they would have success running at the inside part of that uh, Purdue defensive line because Matt Hernandez, 71, is the nose guard. First time to play there. Hannah, they feel like they can make something happen on the inside. Second down two. Give is to Wilder. Check it, Terry Hill again, number 22, not 32. Number 30. Football. And Hill, who needed to get across the 29, though that's a 29 and a half for first down yardage, has done so as they mark the football to 30. So they'll move the chains. It will be a first down for Missouri as you look at statistics on the year for Terry Hill. <laughs> Hill now out of the football game, and George Shorthose. Bradley throws, and Ron Fellows, senior from Kansas City, Kansas, is unable to hold on. Fellows playing today with a black jacket to protect bruised ribs. Here's another look. Watch Fellows, he releases to his outside. Now watch him, he just go kind of flaring off to, the le to his left. The ball's there, but he's looking upfield. It hits him the right spot but he's looking for something yardage before he catches the football. He's got to catch it first. Two minutes, 32 seconds still to go in the quarter. Both teams had long layoffs at the end of the regular season. Each has practiced for about a total of 10 days coming into this ball game. On second down, Terry Hill again with the football. And Hill, who spent only one play on the sideline, gets it out to the 33-yard line, where now it will be third down six. Number 36, Robert Williams, came up from his cornerback position to make the stop for Purdue. I say third and six, let's make it third and seven. They must get the football across the 40 for a first down. City who was covered by free safety Marcus McKinney. Watch Blair cross the middle again. McKinney will come into the shot. Blair's all by himself. The ball is going to be a little bit high. Has to go up for it. He really had it in his hands. They're just not putting the ball away and catching it. McKinney makes a good recovery, but it could have been a caught pass. Same as the ball to Fellows. Not perfect, but certainly catchable. So for the third time in the quarter, Jeff Brockhouse comes on to punt for Missouri. And Craig and Kay, 45 and 38, are deep to the deep. Rockhouse hits this one very well. This is Craig and he's 18. Barely has a hole and then is felt from the 24 yard line after the 49 yard punt by Brockhouse. Six yard return by Scott Craig. Setbacks are still making it and McCall behind Herman and this is Ben McCall. Number 48 is Van Darko, 205-pound junior linebacker from Columbia, Missouri, the home of Missouri University. Stops McCall after a gain of two. It will be second and eight. Herman's statistics on the day. He has had a good first quarter. Four with the outstanding open field tackle is Lester Dickey, 220-pound senior linebacker from Kansas City, an all-Big 8 player who may have to sacrifice some playing time today to make room for the five or even six defensive backs that Missouri will be using. The pickup was about four yards, and now it will be third down four from just across the 30. Let's get the ball exactly to the 34 for first down. And Missouri goes to five defensive backs on this play. And Herman is able to hit Bart Burrell out across the 40 to the 43-yard line. Well, they played together in high school. They have been on the same wavelength for four years in West Lafayette. 
and Eric Wright could not stop Bart Burrow from catching this pass. Burrow gets cut down this time. Now watch him recover. It throws everything off. Mark Herman's timing. He is forced out of the pocket. Burrow adjusts his uh, elbow pad, breaks the outside, sees Mark's in trouble, has to break his tempo. Now he comes and finds the open area. Jumps up and catches the ball. They say he's not very fast, but he's very effective and conscientious football player on the field. And during that replay, the first quarter has expired. So, Mark Herman continues to throw the football well and Purdue, leading 7-0 with... As the second quarter begins, Purdue will now move from right to left on the screen. And Ben McCall, who has been the workhorse in the running game, has first down yardage into Missouri territory across the Missouri 45 at the 44-yard line before Van Darko again, along with Johnny Poe, were able to stop him. We've just received word that our handheld cameraman on the far side of the field, Cass Wagner, has sustained an injury. And if you look at this play, you may see Cass go down in the pileup. This is the play from early in the first quarter. When the Missouri receiver was pushed out of bounds in the middle of the frame, you will see the camera going down. That is our handheld cameraman, Cass Wagner. Herman has a touchdown deep to the Bryant. So the bomb explodes for Purdue. to throw deep, and Steve Bryant beats Eric Wright at the tail end of the Missouri zone. It is just a straight pattern right across the post pattern across the middle. He breaks it right there. He just runs by everybody. Bryant's got the tremendous speed, 9-5. Wright comes in, but it's way too late, and it's a touchdown. And boy, Mark Herman makes things happen quick. And now Anderson will try to add the extra point with Pearl holding. Kick is up and good. So Purdue goes 76 yards in only five plays. They took two minutes and 20 seconds to do it. And Mark Herman is really starting to shred the Tiger pass defense. We are very early in the second quarter. It is now 14-0 Purdue. The Boilermakers will kick it off when we come back. But very quickly, watch him straight drop back. One, two, three, four, five, set up throw. Across the middle, Bryant runs right by Kevin Carter. He splits the two deep zone. And all it is is Eric Wright trying to come back and help in pursuit, but it's too late. Too deep and underneath coverages, and they go right down the middle and split it. They had people going to the outside perimeters and then right in the middle. Make the touchdown pass 43 yards from Herman to Bryant. Second touchdown pass of the game for Herman. The first one went to Burl, and Purdue leads it 14-0 as Anderson kicks off. the football down the far sideline. Dramatic cutback, he's going to go in. A great piece of trickery, a great individual effort. Poe reversing off the fellows. And fellows all the way down the sideline. The radical cutback inside the Premier 20. A 92-yard touchdown kickoff return. save a temporarily nervous moment and they'll have the football at their 30-yard line. Now, 
before all the excitement began, we were trying to tell you about Cass Wagner, our handheld cameraman, who went down in the pileup on the far sideline. Again, you see the camera in the middle of the screen as it begins to go down. We have word that Cass Wagner sustained a broken leg on this play. We know that there are some of you out there who are close to Cass Wagner and may be worried about him. We want to assure you that he is okay. He is on his way to the hospital. But in one of those freak instances that occasionally occur on the sidelines at a football game, a broken leg for our handheld cameraman, Cass Wagner, and our thoughts are with him as he goes to the hospital. On first down, John Macon, the fullback, carried the ball for Purdue. And he picks up three. It will be second down seven. And there is number 76, Henry File, an offensive tackle for Purdue, who was hurt on the last series for them. Appears to have a sprained ankle, and we now have word from the bench that he does indeed have a sprained ankle. He's out for the game. Statue of Liberty, number 21, is Jimmy Smith. Good open field tackle. Flag is down. First penalty flag of the ball game. Holding call against Purdue. Smith had made it out to the 34, but the penalty will be marked off from the point at which the hold was placed. We have a microphone on referee Pete Williams, and we'll hope to be able to hear him now as he makes this call. After the mark off. So we have had an explosion early in the second quarter. Mark Herman throwing the 43 yard touchdown pass to Steve Bryant. And Missouri coming back with the kickoff return. Now here's Pete Williams. Holding against the white team on the right side of the line. Still second down. Number 70, Claiborne Fields, a sophomore defensive or offensive tackle from Washington, D.C., has replaced Henry File, number 76, in the lineup now for Purdue. And Jimmy Smith, number 21, will make his first appearance of the ball game as a setback on this series. And this is Smith. Was he down before he fumbled the football? Apparently so. Lester Dickey, number 34, Missouri's outstanding linebacker, made the stop. Let's see what happens. Jimmy Smith, he gets the ball. Let's see if he fumbles the ball. He, he does fumble. There it is. It pops loose. Ooh, it came out awful early. Hmm. Oh, I see what happened. It looked like Poe didn't make the uh, recovery on the ball, and then some Purdue player evidently fell on it. On second down, long yardage. This is Smith, and he shows you his quick feet as he gets across the 20 to the 25-yard line before Tony Green, number 91, made the stop. I'm not so sure that's exactly what happened, Steve. I, I think that number six, uh, Raymond Harrison, had fallen on the ball for Missouri, but the officials are simply ruling that Smith's forward progress had been stopped before he was hit. I didn't get see the end of the replay. It might have been that way, but I... Now we have a fourth down, 13 yards to go, and Jim Boucher is back to punt for Purdue. And number nine, Johnny Poe makes a fair catch. They appear to be a fumble by Jimmy Smith. Terry Hill and James Wilder are the setbacks behind Phil Bradley as Missouri starts the offense to 35. Good fake. And Bradley hits Ron Fellows down the middle. Fellows spins away for a moment and then is dropped right at midfield. Number 60, David Fry, an outside linebacker, was there to make the stop. Watch the fake of Phil Bradley. Boy, perfect fake. Sets up, throws, fellows right across the middle, behind the linebackers, underneath the secondary. Very well executed on the fake of Phil Bradley, the quarterback. Watch fellows again. Come down the line. Watch him just look out, in, right across, a cut inside. Right behind those linebackers. Former defensive back who has become quite a flanker for Missouri. Ron Fellows, one of the men that the Purdue defensive coach is most fear. On first down from the 49-yard line, Perry Hill takes the football into Purdue territory and is dropped at the 46. Pick up a five. It will be second down five for Missouri. Out in El Paso, Texas, second quarter, eighth-ranked Nebraska leading 17th-ranked Mississippi State, 10 nothing. And as the bowl season continues to unwind, there will be more shuffling in the top 20. Brad 
to step inside, but the play was read perfectly by Andy Gladstone, number 86, an outside linebacker for Purdue, who is replacing the injured Tom Kingsbury in the lineup. And I, know the okay. I know the option play. Watch Bill Bradley. Indecision. He should have pitched the ball. He had the corner just the way he wanted. He had the lead back for the block. Bill Bradley should have pitched. He's become a more conservative quarterback over the years at the helm for Missouri. One of the things that Missouri coaches are most proud of about Bill Bradley is his facility for protecting the football. They don't turn it over much. Third down, seven. And Bradley misses down the middle. Intended for number 87, Craig White. In the game, it slid in. So that brings up another punting situation. And again, Jeff Brockhouse will come on for the Tigers. Missouri now 0 for 4 on third down conversions in the football game. Craig is to the far side. Bill Kay to the near side of your screen. As Brockhouse waits the snap. Last punt traveled 49 yards. This one is fair caught by Craig at the 10-yard line. 38-yard punt by Brockhaus, an extremely effective one, is now Purdue. Faces 90 yards of real estate, leading 14-6, 9.46 still to go before half time. Coming up next, stepped on the West Coast, special wide world of sports program on a tour of American figure skaters in China and a remarkable look behind the scenes of the People's Republic of China with some top figure skaters such as Peggy Fleming, Ty Babylonia, Randy Gardner, Linda Fradiani, Jojo Starback, Elaine Zayak, and more. Very special wide world of sports. On first down, it is McCall with the football for Purdue, and he gets it across the 10-yard line out to about the 12. Then McCall now eight carries for 42 yards in the ball game. Lester Dickey made the stop for Missouri, and the pace of the game begins to slow. Thankfully. It was rather fast and furious for a while. Hermit loops it out, intended for Bart Burrell. Plenty of time for Eric Wright, number 21, to react, and Wright almost had an interception. It is the one Achilles heel of Mark Herman that he throws an interceptable pass. He really does. This time it really shows the critics of Mark Herman say that he throws the ball with too much air between the ball and the ground. Throws it a little bit soft. That time the ball was overthrown and almost intercepted by 21 Eric Wright. 19 touchdown passes during the regular season for Herman. 17 interceptions. And one of the NCAA records he holds is the career record for interceptions. On third down and eight, five defensive backs in the game for Missouri. The Tigers show blitz, don't do it. And Herman, who probably called that play at the line of scrimmage, gave to the fullback John Macon on a little delay. He dropped short of a first down by Van Garfield. You've got to compliment the Purdue, the Purdue uh, offensive coaches because they've really uh, figured out Missouri uh, quite early. On first down, from the 46, Bradley throws over the middle. Number 83 is down to the 20-yard line before Bill Kay, the strong side corner, number 38, made the stop. Gibbler, the tight end, the number two receiver, watching him across the middle again, using a little bit of what Purdue does with their tight end, and Gibbler uses his size, 6'4", 225, just breaks across the middle, and, a, and the Kay has to make the play, the uh, cornerback from the far side. First time Missouri has thrown to the tight end, you look at Warren Howard, former Oakland Raider defensive back. Bradley throws in the flat to Fellows. And Fellows is down to the K yard line. Again, it is Bill K who makes the tackle for Purdue. Watch Fellows number eight. Bradley's really starting to find his receivers now. They're starting to catch it. Just a straight square out. Ball just where it had to be thrown. Good play by, uh, again, K had to make the tackle. Another first down for Missouri. And the ball is marked just outside the 10. They can get a first down without scoring, but they would do it inside the one-yard line. This is Wilder, and Wilder shows you his awesome power as he pounds up inside the five-yard line before David Fry is finally able to drag him down. James Wilder, 
pounded by thigh and leg injuries throughout his career, but always effective. Here's another look. Watch Wilder in a matchup with Looney, number 59. He just will take him on right there and just use his power and his strength, and Wilder wins this battle. Looney is trying to get him down. He says, help me, guys. I can't handle him. Puts him on his back. If you're the odd pro scout watching this game at home, Wilder is 6'2", 221, and he may have just scored. I think they're going to mark him just short of the goal line. Two years ago, he gained 115 yards in a 20 to 15 Missouri win over LSU to be the most valuable player in the Liberty Bowl. No man has ever won that award twice. As you look at Jim Young on the sideline, Looney, 59, and Hannah, number 96, were the men who stopped Wilder just short of the goal line. But as I mentioned, they were capable of picking up a first down inside the one, and Wilder may have done it. He did. First and goal. And you can see that you can hardly get first and goal any closer than that. Remember, Missouri trails 14-6. Here's the difference where Missouri, uh, between Missouri and Purdue, the fact that they can run the option play, the pass, Wilder, there's a whole bunch of combinations they can run at the goal line. Watch Howard Richards, number 72 on the right side. That's where they go, and that's where they have the touchdown if, if Wilder held on. Official signal touchdown. He broke the plane of the goal line with the ball. The fumble became incidental, and James Wilder has brought Missouri to within two points. It's just the outside dive play. Watch Wilder. He's going to read the tackle. He does. He reads Richard's block and breaks to the outside and into the end zone. He did fumble, but he had broken the plane for his because, and then it uh, obviously was a touchdown. Good call by the referee. The wide side of the field. Only one back in the backfield. They're probably going to three wide receivers to the right. Bradley under pressure. Throws into the end zone, it's picked off. The man who was there to intercept it was number 62, linebacker Mike Marks. But that play was snuffed almost from the beginning. So, with six minutes, 16 seconds, your pass started things off from Phil Bradley to tight end Andy Gibbler. Brockhouse's kick is taken by Scott Craig inside his 15-yard line, and Craig, coming up the near sideline, gets across the 20 near the 25-yard line for number 95, Taft Sales, made the stop for Purdue, or for Missouri, I should say. This program is being brought to you as an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. Now let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. This is WFTV, Channel 9 of Orlando. First down now for Mark Herman and the Boilermakers with the ball at the 26-yard line. Herman, oblivious under pressure, gets the ball away to Ben McCall, and McCall is across the 35-yard line. Number 91, Tony Green, along with number 30, Bill Whitaker, making the stop for Missouri. Pickup of 11 yards and a first down for Purdue. What Purdue's doing is they're getting the deep drop by Mark on his uh, drop back pass, and then the receivers are going deep into the two zone area, and then he's throwing the short underneath route, trying to be very effective underneath, and Missouri's giving him the short route. There are the statistics. And now this is the fullback, John Macon, with the ball. Only 381 yards on the year for Macon, but Purdue has been much more effective than we expected them to be running the football today. Already today, Macon has. Seven carries for 38 yards, including a pickup of eight on that play before Lester Dickey, number 34, and Eric Wright, 21, made the stop. Second down and a yard to go. Total offense leaders for the NCAA. You see that Purdue is fifth on the list. 441 and a half yards a game, most of them through the air, where Mark Herman is the man in the offense. On second and one, Ben McCall with the football. Needed to get just across the 47-yard line for a first down, and he is short of it. Number 92, Benny Smith, defensive tackle, is there to make the stop for Missouri. And you look at Phil Bradley along the sideline. Phil is loose. Baseball player in the spring. That's where he gets the idea of using the lamp black under the eyes. Now third and one, and Herman throws for it, and throws to Bart Burrell, complete in Missouri territory at the 42-yard line, a 
another Purdue first down. Burl and Herman have been given the freedom by Purdue coaches to freelance quite a bit today. Burl, it's just a quick look in. All it is, one, two step by Mark, and just throws right across the middle and hits him. Bart Burl, the young man that he threw with a lot in junior high and high school. The easy catch, three catches today for 30 yards for Mr. Burl. Bow and right for the two defensive backs who are there from Missouri. Purdue has first down at the Mizzou 41. Herman, down the middle, Steve Bryant. Knocked down by number 18, Kevin Potter, who loves to hit. He's involved in a controversy involving a hit on Jarvis Redwine earlier this year, but this is an excellent throw. It really is. Bryant across the middle. Now this time, he throws beneath, behind the five underneath people, the linebackers and the ends that drop, and right underneath the two zone. He's throwing right in the pocket of the defensive secondary that Missouri is uh, throwing at Purdue today. He has really uh, thrown in, uh, th through the ball very well and pinpointed passes to right boom. First down at the 22. This is Macon, the fullback, and Macon is inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. With the exception of the very first time, Herman dropped back as you see the score again from El Paso. Nebraska leading Mississippi State now 17-0 at halftime. The exception of the very first time Herman dropped back early in the ball game for an 11-yard loss, he was sacked by Missouri. Since then, the Tigers have not been able to get in on him and create enough pressure to disrupt the timing of the Purdue pass pattern. And when they have their timing down, they're going to move the football. Second down five. Six defensive backs in the game for Missouri. And Herman solves it anyway. As Steve Bryant goes out of bounds at the six-yard line, number nine, Johnny Poe, was there. Again, going to Bryant. Herman, it's the deep out route. Boy, they're giving him a lot of cushion, a cushion on the sideline. Number nine, Johnny Poe is there, but they're giving a lot of cushion to these receivers. And when you get closer towards the goal line, you've got to tighten up. You've got to go a little bit of man and try to hold them off. Right now, three catches for 73 yards. And he's the man who is killing Missouri to this point in the game. Earl and Young have also caught the football. They're having real trouble covering Bryant on first down. A weak side swing the ball. That's a tough play to run at the goal line. Number 56, Jerome Sally. The middle guard reacted over to make the stop, along with Lester Zicky. And there was no gain on the play, or to call it a gain of a yard, it'll be second down goal from the five. At weak side, pitch sweep has been the bread and butter running play for Purdue all year, but in this area of the field, it's hard to get running room. the play that time for Missouri. Watch this time. Now Mark's going to throw the ball without Burl even watching. It's just a time. They know each other by heart. He's, the ball is in the air. He hasn't even looked. Now he's looked. The ball's there. And this time Poe turns around, makes the right play. Earlier in the ball game in the first touchdown, he did not turn quick enough. Third and goal is the five. Again, Missouri goes to six defensive back. in the drive. Missouri went to six defensive back both times. Herman completed the pass. And now as Anderson adds the extra point, Purdue stretches the lead back to nine points at 21 to 12. 203 to halftime. We'll be back. Purdue kick. And the ball is fumbled back at the goal line by Ron Fellows. Now Fellows looks for running room on the near side. And he Number 36, Robert Williams, starting cornerback, who plays on special teams for Purdue, was the man who chased Fellows down and dropped him at the 21-yard line. Minute 56 to go before halftime, and we'll see what Phil Bradley and the Tigers will try to cook up from 79 yards away, trailing 21-12. 
set back to James Wilder and Terry Hill. Blair and Fellows both to the top of the three. Bradley rolls that way. Puts it up for Blair, and he makes the catch. Going out of bounds at the 42-yard line. An excellent touch pass by Bill Bradley. Picks up 21 yards. Watch uh, Phil Bradley this time roll to his left and watch him throw it. Kenny Blair, number 82, watch where his feet are. He had, he had one foot in. That's all you need in all major ranks. Marcus McKinney, the free safety, was right there, but not quite in time. So another first down for Missouri. Now Bradley needs to get away from one man and does not. Did he get rid of the ball? No, he is done. Number 86 is Andy Gladstone, a six foot three inch, 213 pound sophomore linebacker from St. Louis, who is replacing an outstanding outside linebacker named Tom Kingsbury, who's missing this game with a knee injury. Well, there are detractors. There are those who say that he sets up poorly, that his release is too slow, that he throws the ball with no pace on it. But right now, for Mark Herman, the numbers speak for themselves. He's had seven 300 yard games in his career and one 400 yard. And he's 343 to be a 10 thousand yard total offense leader. Nobody's ever broken 10,000. Second down and a long way to go. And on the sprint draw, Terry Hill is dropped right in his track. Number 71, Matt Hernandez, who has played right up to his capabilities so far today, helped to make the stop along with number 94, Calvin Clark. So now with the ball back at the 30-yard line, Missouri calls timeout. And Missouri comes out in a standard pro set. Bradley throws over the middle to Terry Hill. Hill has a little breathing room out to the 40-yard line. And Jeff Brockhouse will now come on to kick the ball away after Mike Marks, number 62, made the stop for Purdue. There comes Bradley, a very poised and experienced quarterback. He will not go into the locker room with his head down trailing by nine points. No, he's a character athlete. I've done several ball games with Phil Bradley, and he had made... In some ball games, when he has not played very well in the first half, he always comes back and plays an exceptional second half ball game. Purdue has been impressive on defense. They really have. Craig and Kay are deep to receive kick from this man, Jeff Brockhouse, the senior from Brentwood, Missouri. He used to be the place kicker for Missouri, but gave those duties up to concentrate on punting. And Brockhouse's punt rolls inside the 10 and will be downed at the three yard line. So now, with five seconds on the clock, carried the ball much. Brockhouse kicks it off into the end zone. Smith fumbles it out of the back of the end zone and on the touchback, Purdue will start with the football at the 20. Offensive backs and receivers for Purdue, Herman McCall, Macon, Bryant, and Burl. Both Bryant and Burl had big first half catching the ball. Slavin Fields has replaced Bile at offensive tackle. Otherwise the same. Hull, Quinn, Gunner, Zaleski, and the great tight end, Dave Young. First down for the Boilermakers at the 20 and the setback far. McCall and Macon behind Herman. Give on first down to Macon. He has a pickup of about four out to the 24-yard line. Part of the Missouri defense is the linebackers, but here's the defensive line. Tony Green, an experienced defensive end. Randy Joseph does not play as much today because of the six defensive back scheme. Jerome Sally at middle guard. Benny Smith, the defensive tackle, and Wendell Ray is an all-Big 8 defensive end. On second down, six, Herman drops back, throws in the flat to McCall, and McCall is close to first down yardage, but not quite there as he's brought down at the 29-yard line. It will be third down, one. Joseph made the tackle. And here's the rest of the Missouri defense. Lester Dickey, an outstanding linebacker who was in on several tackles in the first half. Darko, who made every tackle at the beginning of the game. Poe, a cornerback. The other cornerback is excellent. Eric Wright is a very good free safety. Kevin Potter, the strong safety, had some problems with Dave Young in the first half. And Bill Whitaker, Wild Bill as they call him, he's a big eight leader in interception. And this time, McCall is stopped short of the first down on third and one. Big play in the middle of the line by Jerome Sally, the Missouri middle guard. So now, Jim Boucher will come on to kick the football away for Purdue. 
and Missouri will prepare for their first possession of the second half. Poe and Whitaker, 9 and 30, will go deep to receive the punt for Missouri. You see number 30, Whitaker, on the near side, standing at his 34-yard line. Boche in the first half, three punts for a 37.3-yard average. This one is short. And Whitaker very wisely allows it to drop. It bounces out of bounds at the Missouri 42. So the Tigers will start their first possession of the second half in excellent field position after the 29-yard Boche punt. Missouri offense, of course, led by all-big eight quarterback Phil Bradley. Wilder, who showed you his power in the first half. Hill, Fellows, and Blair, the dangerous man there, Ron Fellows. Washington, Sadler, Edelman, Lechner, Richards, and Gibbler along the offensive front. And Howard Richards, strong side tackle is the man to watch in short yardage situation. On first down, Wilder has the football. He is met and dropped right at the line of scrimmage by Mike Mark, the senior linebacker. Now here's the Purdue defensive line. Defensive tackle Calvin Clark. Casey Moore plays part of the time at nose guard. Paul Hanna plays at defensive tackle. Outside linebackers Andy Gladstone and David Dry. One man whose face you didn't see there, but who's been a factor is a tackle named Matt Hernandez. There's Marks, a good inside linebacker, and Looney, an outstanding one. On second down nine, Bradley throws back. This will be his fourth interception, dropped back into pass coverage. He is reading, the ball is tipped up in the air. He just is right in the right place at the right time and makes the interception. Not a bad little run. Using a little stiff arm going down the sideline. Fourth interception on the season for James Looney, senior linebacker. Second turnover of the game for Missouri. The ball was tipped off the hands of tight end Andy Gibbler, who was the intended receiver on the play. First down from the 35-yard line for Purdue. Play fake. Down the middle, now throws on the right sideline to Burrow, and Burrow is all the way inside the 20 to the 15 yard line before Johnny Poe can pick him up. So Herman picks up right where he left off in the first half, throwing the football. Mark Herman is just getting warmer as the day gets colder. Watch him, Burrow just going to stop right there. Really, not much of a pattern, just goes straight, straight down the field, waiting on the football. Mark saw everything on the field and chose the open receiver Bart Burrell and just turns up field and makes a significant gain. Look at the downfield block by Ben McCall all the way down there from the setback position. That is effort. Herman, freelance, throws to McCall. And McCall dances along the 10-yard line before being belted back by Van Darko, number 48. Benny Smith, number 92, was the man who was in to put the pressure on Herman, but Herman was able to react quickly and get the football away. Now there is an injury on the field, and the man who is down is in a white jersey, so Purdue trainers will come on. It appears to be Steve Bryant, the flanker who stretches the defense for Purdue to make holes underneath for the other receivers, Young and Burrow. And he may just have been temporarily shaken up as the wind knocked out of him as he certainly looks to be in pretty good shape as he runs off. There's a pickup of four on the improvised pass to McCall. It is now second down, six yards to go. The ball on the 12-yard line. Critical situation for Missouri. 24-12 would not be too bad. 28-12 would make things difficult. in the ball game now for Purdue as the tight end replaced Bryant. Herman again throws the little dinker over the middle to McCall. And Eric Wright, number 21, the free safety, made the stop for Missouri. Mark Herman, straight drop back, one, two, three, throw. He's looking for Ben McCall out of the backfield. He likes to use those backs of the backfield, and they're still in an underneath zone coverage. And when you get that close, you've got to start picking up man because they can get away. You've got to play very close. And that time, McCall broke into the open, and Mark did he. Now McCall tries to get outside. Loses the football. Big opportunity for Missouri. Kevin Potter, number 18, is the man who knocked it loose. And number 96, Ray Stevens the football for Missouri. This is a 
costly mistake. They had a chance to maybe put it away. McCall breaks to the outside. Watch him right here. Let's see who gets it. There it is. He's carrying the ball very loose. Number 18, Potter knocked it loose. And Stevens, number 96, second team defensive end, falls on it. Big play, Missouri defense. Outstanding play by Kevin Potter, who saw the football out there away from Ben McCall's body and appeared to just reach out and knock it out with his hand. So Missouri now will try to move from their 11-yard line where the fumble was recovered. Bradley throws in the flat, completes the number eight, Ron Fellows. And the senior from Kansas City is knocked out of bounds by Bill Kay, the strong side corner, but not before Fellows is out across the 20 to the 22-yard line and gives a breath of fresh air to the Missouri offense. The defense is turning the ball back to the offense, and now they're trying to do something with it. Bradley, just on the straight out route, about 12 yards down the field, Fellows goes up over the shoulder to catch the ball, and now the tempo is changing more to uh, Missouri's favor right now. A little bit better concentration by Fellows than he demonstrated early in the game when he had trouble catching the ball. On first down with the 24, Wilder. And Wilder, whose name epitomizes the way he runs, is finally dragged down by Looney. To show you were fair, early in the ball game, Wilder went over Looney. This time, watch Looney win this battle. Takes him on. This time, gets a little bit lower, picks his feet off the ground, and you can't go without your feet on the ground. Looney makes the tackle. Big play. We are fair, aren't we? We are. The linebackers in the Purdue defense are very key. They have to flow. They are protected the majority of the time. If they're not protected, then they're dead. Double tight end for Missouri on second down seven. And it demonstrates some nice footwork up to the 29-yard line, but that is well short of first down yardage. Bill Kay ceased pass coverage and came up to help make the tackle. And now let's look at Looney again. Looney on the outside. He's already broken to the outside from his linebacker position, number 59. The little juke by Phil Bradley. That's what causes big eight coaches. They, to think that Phil Bradley is, is one of the finest players that had to play in the last four years because he has the ability to run the option play to throw, but he's, he's more dangerous when he scrambles, just like that play. Third down three. They must get the ball to the 32 for a first down. Yeah, Bradley trying to go. The football is loose. And let's see if Terry Hill was able to get it back from Missouri. I believe he was. He is there battling with number 60, David Fry, for the ball. And it remains under the black jersey of Terry Hill. Calvin Clark was the man who knocked the football loose for Purdue. Phil's trying to run the option play down the line option. He's reading everything, get the block inside, turns it inside, hoping Wilder will make the block on Looney. And the ball pops loose right as he was going down, and it was a mad scramble. There were a lot of them there, along with Calvin Clark. Looney was there. And now Brockhouse's punt is taken by Bill Kay at the 38. And he's dragged down back at the 35-yard line. So, slight retreat on the return. Ken Judd, number 39, was the man downfield covering excellently for Missouri. And after the 38-yard punt by Brockhouse, Purdue will have the football at their 34, leading 21-12. We come back. Out on the last series with an injury is back in the ballgame. Mark Herman is one yard away from the Liberty Bowl passing yardage record held by David James. And that will be the first illegal procedure. The give on the draw to Ben McCall. A nice piece of running by McCall is able to cut back up inside and find running room across the 40 to the 42-yard line. The pickup of 12. It is not enough to get the first down. I tell you, you have to compliment Hall, Quinn, and Gunner, the front uh, three men, the center and two guards. Watch McCall just break, use his own ability. He's just feeling everything in the secondary. Of course, a little bit of uh, help there from the uh, back judge. He blocked by number 37, the fullback, John Macon, senior from Marion, Indiana. And McCall now, 13 carries for 49 yards in the game. Second down, three yards to go for the Boilermakers. This time he's belted right at the line of scrimmage. Number 99, Randy Joseph, sophomore defensive tackle from Omaha, along with Van Darko and Wendell Ray, were the three Missouri Tigers who were on McCall's jersey. Time you saw remaining in the third quarter. The wind has picked up considerably, particularly in the end of the field, which Purdue is operating from at this point. That means that it will be blowing against Missouri 
in the fourth quarter. Herman throws complete to Burrow, and Burrow is across midfield in the Missouri territory at the 47 with a first down before Johnny Poe and Kevin Potter can stop it. Bart Burrow, watch him, it just cut inside, one, two, three, is throwing on Mark Herman's part. Just perfectly well-timed, coordinated receivers. That time Missouri was in their base defensive secondary coverage. And that completion sets the new Liberty Bowl passing yard. It's record for Mark Herman, breaking the previous record held by David James of Kansas. This guy breaks the record almost every time he brushes his teeth. Kevin Potter right there. The ball is catchable. His feet were never touching the ground, but I tell you, Kevin Potter, number 18, the strong safety, really gave him a shot. Weren't they? Weren't his feet? Did, didn't he get one foot I don't, down? I don't Could think Could we he... have another look? I'd love to see it one more time. Let's just check it out one more time. You gotta have a foot touching. Watch the right foot. Feet are up in the ground. There's the left foot. That, that foot is touching, Steve Davis. Don't you think so? Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I had the wrong... Uh, the, the white shoes are Burroughs, and I believe that that was a legal catch. All right, third take time. Take a look one more time. We're okay. never afraid to admit a mistake. The ball's up. Look for a white shoe. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You it definitely right. had the left foot down. But in the interim, and there was no complaint from Burl on the call, incidentally, in the interim, making the fullback picked up six yards for Purdue, and now the Boilermakers face a third down four. They must get the ball to the 37-yard line of Missouri for a first down. Herman out of the shotgun against five defensive backs. Complete this to Burrow. And he almost got away from number 21, Eric Wright. Had he done so, it would have been six. But it is a first down inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. And again, you watch Bart Burrow. Again, watch him. He's working on Eric Wright, number 21. He just goes down in just a nice little get-in-the-open type pattern that you really can't describe it. Eric Wright, 21, the free safety has to make the tackle. But Missouri is really dropping, trying to protect from the deep route. And Mark Herman is just ripping them on the short route. There, the statistics on Herman, remarkably accurate. All day long, touchdown. No flag down, and Burrell has his second touchdown catch of the day. Eric Wright, number 21, fell down in the defensive backfield to set up that touchdown catch. And Herman goes to 20 of 25 with this throw. This time he drops to his left. He's going to watch Burrow right across the middle again, splitting the two deep zones. They've done it twice already in this football game, and it's the same song and dance. Kevin Potter's there too late. There's Burrow again. Watch him. He's not real fast. Makes a little juke step to the outside. Now it's just the post route across the middle. The defensive back fell. That was Eric Wright. You saw him falling down behind Burrow as Burrow made the cut to the end zone. And the kick by Barilli. Or check it, I should say, by Rick Anderson. Is up and through, and Purdue has now stretched the lead to 28-12. Five minutes still to go in the third quarter. Yardage record as he rolls to 105 yards on the day. On the kickoff, number 36, freshman running back Tracy Mack has the football and brings it back to the 34-yard line. So Missouri will have good field position. But Steve Davis, this looks easy. Watch Burrell. Now he gets a little bit of help out of uh, Eric Wright, who falls down right there on the cut. Falls down, and he splits the seam right in the middle of the two-deep zone. And he does make it really look easy. I wish I could throw like that. Herman just stands in effortlessly and throws with perfect accuracy. He has been harried. We saw him against Michigan when he was totally ineffective. Today he has been totally the opposite. Bradley throwing in the flat to Terry Hill. And Hill is knocked out of bounds across the 45 to the 46 by Marcus McKinney, but it's a first down for Missouri. Matt Hernandez, number 71, a defensive tackle who played so well early in the ball game for Purdue, has sustained a badly sprained ankle, is not likely to return, and he's been replaced now at middle guard by Casey Moore. And you see the Sun Bowl score from El Paso, where Nebraska is cruising, leading 24-3 Mississippi State in the third quarter. First down for Missouri, and Bradley throws this time to number 82, Blair, and Blair is belted out of bounds down at the 29-yard line by Marcus McKinney. 
McKinney, but this is a big play and sets up a scoring chance for Missouri. Missouri needs to really get something going again. Bradley puts pressure on the perimeter by rolling out, throws a good ball, hits Blair, number 82, to split in right where he has to, and then Marcus McKinney, all he can do is just force him out of bounds. Good throw, good catch. Missouri needs a bunch of those. To get back to the ball game and get their emotions going. They're a little flat right now. Andy Hill, number 84, in the game, replacing Blair as he takes a brief rest. Bradley, 9 of 14 on the day for 131 yards. Now calling an audible as Purdue shows slip. And he gives to freshman running back George Shorthose. Shorthose, an outstanding prospect out of Jefferson City, is stopped by Andy Gladstone and Calvin Clark after a very short game. Call it a pickup of one and make it second down nine. Or if you prefer, call it no gain and make it second down ten. Short hose is junior year in high school, averaged 17 yards per carry. Hard to believe that stat. Must have been playing in your league. <laughs> second down. Bradley goes and number 82 Blair was hit just as the ball got there by 36 Robert Williams. Good play by Williams, who's from St. Louis, playing against his home state's university, and has forced a third down, a long nine, a short 10 for Phil Bradley. I'm really surprised that Missouri has not run the option play more today with Phil Bradley. For some reason, I feel like they've only come down the line a couple of times on the option play, and they've really not tested the perimeters of that Purdue defense. A Purdue defense which doesn't play that much exactly. against the option play. Exactly. Five defensive backs in the game now to face Bradley, and he rifles the ball over the middle, and a flag goes down. Interference will be called inside the 10-yard line. The intended receiver was the tight end, Andy Gibbler. The interference was unnecessary because the ball was tipped into the air, and now the interference is nullified by the tipped ball. The contact became legal once the ball had been tipped. Number 43, Tim Seneff, the strong safety, who tips the ball in the air, I believe. Let's see who tips the ball. ball. Might Jeff be Robert Williams. Foul. Let's look. There it is. That's Seneff. That's Seneff. And the interference would have been called against Robert Williams, number 36. And my spotter, Mike Swanson, is right on top of that. And, of course, the flag came up off the turf. Now Barilli is on to attempt a 45-yard field goal from Missouri. Earlier, he missed an extra point, but the field goal attempt is good. So Ron Barilli redeems himself for a missed extra point by coming back with a field goal, and with 3.40 to go in the third quarter, Missouri has narrowed the Purdue lead to 28 off for Missouri, and number 21, Jim Smith, will wait at the five-yard line for it. the 40-yard line. Demetrius Johnson, number 29, had a shot. Jimmy Smith has the 9-6 speed or 4-4 speed in the 40-yard dash. He just breaks down the sideline. Brock 9 Poe had to knock him out of bounds on the play. Yeah, I thought it was Brockhaus 3, but it was 9. Johnny Poe made quite a hit. I wasn't sure Brockhaus could make that hit. Steve Bryant with an excellent block on the play. Number 1 along the sideline helped the spring Smith. Now Smith stays in the game at tailback and gets the ball. And the leading rusher for Purdue on the season is wrapped up by number 61, Jeff Gaylord, this time for a pickup of only a yard. Jimmy Smith, two years ago, one of the two or three most heavily recruited running backs in the country. And he came out of Kankakee, Illinois. Jim Young and the Purdue staff won a big recruiting battle for him. Last year became disenchanted with football and actually dropped off the team at the end of the season in order to save himself academically. He'll come back this year to become the leading Purdue rusher. Herman is going to be sacked. Number 61 is Jeff Gaylord, a reserve defensive tackle whom the Missouri coaches told us was their most effective pass rusher, and he shows it here. He's a one-time linebacker nose guard. Watch him this time, number 61, Jeff Gaylord. He's wrapping him up, the strongest player, bench press is 525, and he says, this has got to stop. That's the best pass, you know, well, that's a cliche, I don't even want to say it. Best pass rush they've had all day? Best pass defense. Oh, come on. Couldn't I don't want to say it, but I didn't say it. <laughs> Third down, 19. Purdue goes to the shotgun, Missouri goes to six defensive back. Flag down, as Herman 
Foreman looks for Burrell and finds it, but well short of first down yardage. 18 Potter was with Burrell. And now we'll wait to see what the penalty call represents. Looks like holding against the Boilermakers. This is a game between two teams of almost uncanny similarities, both eight and three, both third in their conferences behind two of the continuing outstanding powerhouses in college football. Missouri, of course, third behind Nebraska and Oklahoma in the Big Eight. Purdue, of course, third behind Michigan and Ohio State in the Big Ten. Neither team ranked in the top 20. Offense. Penalty is declined. It will be fourth down. The call from referee Pete Williams speaks for itself. And now Whitaker and Poe will go deep for Missouri to await the punt from Jim Boucher. calling for the fair catch almost as soon as the ball reaches air but in make time of that program less than two minutes now to go in the third quarter as Phil Bradley calls signals for Missouri against the Purdue Blitz gives the ball to Terry Hill and Hill breaks away infamous in the Purdue territory at the 46 yard line Scott, number 99, a reserve defensive tackle was there, but this is a 26-yard pickup for Terry Hill. Of the two runners, Terry Hill hits the hole the quickest, and he really just bolts through it before anybody has a chance to make him. Seneff misses that tackle. Watch Terry Hill just spin and turn and then goes right on in. 26-yard gain, and Missouri needs a few more of those big plays. I said 99, Scott, it was 89. Eddie Weber in the ball game. Terry Hill the tackle. Now first down at the 46-yard line. Bradley throws complete to Andy Gibbler. Sophomore tight end from Grandview, Missouri, is down inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. A pickup of seven. It will be second down three. Missouri still within striking distance, despite the brilliant day that Mark Herman has had for Purdue. Herman with four touchdown passes and an impeccable passing performance. And sent Purdue out to a 28-15 lead. But Missouri is still in the ballgame, largely as a result of a 92-yard kickoff return on a reverse by Ron Fellows. Now on second down three, James Wilder, the outstanding Missouri running back, carries and is knocked down by James Looney of Purdue. He needed to get the football to the 36-yard line for a first down, as there are 34 seconds remaining in the half. And they're going to mark the football about a foot short of a first down. So call it third down and a very short one as Bradley brings the Tigers up. Number 36, Tracy Mack, on his second carry of the game, takes it inside the 35 to pick up the first down. Again, Looney made the tackle for Purdue. We've seen Looney a lot. He had the interception earlier. He's a young man who uh, stayed out of college for two years after high school and worked with weights to build his body up to make himself large enough to play college football. And that is the end of the third quarter. So Point lead over the Missouri team, which is trying to wake up and driving with the football right now. On first down 10 from the 35, Bill Bradley steps up inside on the option play and has a pickup of about three down to the 32-yard line before Andy Gladstone stopped him for Purdue. Earlier I said Purdue was the third-place team in the Big Ten. I should have said tied for second place with Ohio State, both of those two teams with only one conference loss. Missouri was third in the Big Eight, and of course, Purdue was in reality the third most attractive Big Ten team in the eyes of Bowl Scouts. Ohio State beaten yesterday in the Fiesta Bowl by Penn State. Bradley with a flag down, throws down the middle to number 80, Tim Hornoff, a backup tight end from Creve Coeur, Missouri. Mike Marks makes the stop for Purdue after a short game, but a legal procedure against Missouri may make it all a moot point. 
Two teams remarkably similar. Each team has beaten only one team with a winning record this year. Both coached by bright young coaches who apprenticed out west in programs now in the Pac-10 before returning to their more natural and preferred geographic region. Warren Powers, of course, a year at Washington State. Jim Young, of course, four years at Arizona. Pete Williams. Here against the offense. The offense oh, is going to the snap. First Missouri penalty of the day is against number 72, the right tackle Howard Richards. You see him pulling out early on that play, and that created the illegal procedure call. Bellows and Blair now both to the near side of the field on second down 13. Bradley wants Blair and has him inside the 25 to the 22 yard line. He's got a first down before he's stopped by Bill Kay on the 16-yard pickup, Bradley to Blair. More and more now, Bradley is looking for this man, number 82. They're picking up the tempo. Blair this time just to curl inside. He's going to turn inside. Now he's going to move to the open spot where the ball is when it's not there on the timing. He jumps up, catches off his right shoulder. Then he turns like a good receiver, turns and looks for the open field, makes his move, pivots and turns. Bradley now 11 of 18 for 154 yards. Wilder, and you can hear the helmet pop every time he carries the football, but this time James Looney stopped him straight up for a gain of only a yard. One coach will lose in a bowl game for the first time today if there is no tie. Both coaches have won bowl games each of the last two years at these schools, and Jim Young, won a bowl game as a supervising assistant coach in 1970 when he was on the Michigan staff as defensive coordinator and when Bo Schembechler had a heart attack at the Rose Bowl. Number 22, Terry Hill, was unable to hold on to the football. He would have been near the 10-yard line. Terry Hill comes out of the backfield. He is wide open. He's seeing the open field. He's wide open. Nobody's there. He's got the right angles, and he's looking downfield. Lack of concentration. He knew that he had a big play on his hands, and he, there it is. That shows you. He knows what his mistake was. Each team is trying to get back into the final season top 20 rankings with a win today. And there's one further dramatic similarity, an unusual one, which I'll point out in a minute. Bradley being chased on third down. He's run out of bounds, short of first down yardage. Andy Gladstone was the man who came in to chase him out of the pocket. And Chris Scott followed him out of bounds. So now Missouri must deal with a fourth down situation. They need to get the football just inside the 13 yard line for first down. Short hose comes into the ball game, Hill comes out. And Bill Bradley calls timeout and comes to the Missouri sideline to confer with Warren Powers. In progress when we came back, and Bill Bradley hit Andy Gibbler with a very, very big completion for Missouri that keeps their drive alive on fourth down. Bradley straight drop back. Gibbler real close and tight underneath the linebackers, and he's there, makes the play. And Missouri's got it going their way now. Another big pass completion. Gibbler, three catches for 45 yards today. Marcus McKinney made the touchdown saving tackle for Purdue. But now it is first and goal, Missouri at the six yard line after the successful conference and excellent call by Warren Powers and Bill Bradley. This is Terry Hill with the football. And Chris Scott, number 99, a freshman defensive guard from Berea, Ohio, made the stop for Purdue. Scott now in the ball game, along with number 96, Paul Hanna, as the Purdue defensive line has been depleted by the injury to 71, Matt Hernandez, who played so well very early in the football game. Sustained drive for Missouri, the best of the day. 11th play in the drive coming up. Second and goal at the four. Wilder is stopped. Again, Looney was there, number 59, along with Mike Marks, 62. 
the confrontation between Wilder and Looney is becoming almost a personal rivalry at this point. Well, the defensive tackles, Clark and Hannah's job is to keep those linebackers in the nose guard, keep the linebackers free so they can make the tackles. That's the key to the Purdue defense. You can see the story of third down conversions in the game as Missouri faces third and goal at the four. Bradley on the option, pushing toward the goal line, may have gotten to the one. Marcus McKinney was there along with a host of Purdue jerseys. Paul Hanna, number 91, or 96. And this is a very big decision now for Warren Powers, though I think with 10.46 to go, trailing by 13, they almost have no choice. Purdue has played exceptionally well through three quarters. They only allowed 76 yards of rushing, and Missouri is averaging 195 yards, well off the pace. What Missouri would like, Purdue has found some answers to the question about Missouri's running game. Kirtland Thomas, a third string split in, is way to the bottom of your screen at the left. Otherwise, double tight end, full house back here. Wilder going over the top, didn't get it. A Purdue man made a sensational play going up in the air to confront Wilder and keep him out of the end zone, and I believe it was number 62, Mike Mark. Let's take another look. Trying to go over the top. Just gets turned around, gets him up high, away from, gets his feet off the ground. He does not have any power, and they just turn him. Now let's watch. There's Looney, 59. Let's see. Yes, sir. It was Looney. Looney. It was not Mark. Looney hits him right in the mouth, turns him around, gets him away from his power and the height of his jump, then turns him back. So Missouri goes 14 plays, 70. We are back at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis while you were away for that special ABC News report. There was an incompleted pass by Mark Herman out of the end zone, batted down and almost intercepted. A one-yard run by Macon, the fullback, and now it will be third down, nine yards to go. And officials have just marked off a delay of game penalty against Purdue, which took the ball a half yard back inside the one-yard line and makes it third and 10 with the time remaining in the football game, 9.21. Purdue trying to get some breathing room for their punter, Jim Boucher. Macon again with the ball, and again he is belted down. 91, Tony Green. Right side defensive end hit him first. A combination of these two teams and spectacular weather has produced a new Liberty Bowl attendance record, 53,667. It's been a tough day for broken bones all around. President Carter with the apparent broken clavicle. Our handheld cameraman, Cass Wagner, still with our thoughts after the early game mishap, which provided him with a broken leg. Jim Boucher will now punt for the Purdue team. Boilermakers. With the ball at the two, it appears that Purdue will once again take a delay of game penalty. Well, Steve Davis, precisely what are they uh, getting ready to do? Are they, cons they must be considering taking an intentional safety here to get some breathing room for the punt. Probably because uh, they have a they would have 11 point margin and of course uh, they would get a chance to kick the ball out and uh, from their own 20 yard line so that would just it would not make that much difference from 11 to 13 margin so yeah, that's so what they're trying to do but they're thinking about it a whole lot assuming two touchdowns and two extra points 11 points is no different than 13 mark herman will take the intentional safety as herman goes back in the short putt formation puts his knee right down on the turf and gives two points to the Missouri Tigers in return for 20 yards and a free kick for Jim Boucher. Not a bad move. Makes the score 28-7. Place kicker Rick Anderson will now hit the free kick for Purdue as they choose to go with the place kick rather than the punt. Different teams do it different ways. Poe and Whitaker are deep to receive for Missouri. And this is Bill Whitaker. And he is snowed under after he gets it back to the 37-yard line. The first man to hit him was number 82, Craig Abreu, an outside linebacker downfield for Purdue. So now Missouri, which works. The game was fast and furious in the first half. It has
has been slow and measured in the second half. Bradley throws a dangerous pass which was loose in the air for fully a second or two and finally fell down in front of the outstretched arms of Calvin Cluck. I believe it was 99 Chris Scott who batted the ball into the air. Wilder comes out. He is replaced in the lineup by freshman Tracy Mack, Rock Hill, Missouri. Second down, 10. This is Terry Hill. And Hill is finally dropped by Marcus McKinney after he was able to spin to the 43-yard line for a gain of four. It will be third down six. Tim Seneff, number 43, the strong safety, was also there. Seneff, member of the academic All-America team, you look at Terry Hill, number 22, a nifty runner, 5'9 and 180 pounds. Now, Mack is out, and Wilder is back in on third and six. Completion goes to Andy Gibbler, the tight end. With a flag down, Gibbler made the catch across the 50 at the Purdue 48. But if this markoff is against Missouri, it will cost them a first down. Preliminary indication, however, is that it would be offside, offside. against Purdue. It's a defense. And it'll be first down. Thanks, Pete. And it is first down for Missouri in Purdue territory at the 48-yard line. Clock moves slowly with 7.10 to go. Bradley on the day, 13 of 22, 176 yards. Wilder. And he is unable to get enough breathing distance from Looney to move upfield. Goes out of bounds, a yard and a half behind the line of scrimmage. James Looney has played a sensational game at linebacker for Purdue and has so far the biggest defensive play of the game having stopped Wilder on fourth and one at the goal line on the last Missouri possession. Looney so far on the day, 11 solo tackles and three assists. There he is, number 59, the senior from Los Angeles, California. Bradley to Gibbler down the middle. Gibbler short of first down yardage as Seneth drags him down at the 30 five-yard line. They need to get the football to the 33 for a first down, so they'll be facing third and two. Or check it. They're at the 40, and they need to get the football to the 38-yard line. Calvin Clark, the man who was in on Bradley creating the pressure on that last play. Saw the chain on the far sideline. Bradley gives to Wilder on third down, and this time with Looney right in front of him, Wilder is able to push forward enough to pick up the first down. Senep was there to help Looney. And I've already called it a first down, but the officials are going to use the chain. They're a little more careful than I am. However, both spotter Mike Swanson and statistician Jim Ritz are pointing toward the left side of your screen. And they're right. 6.05 to go, and Steve Davis, the Tigers of Missouri, must score twice. Well, they've got to do a lot of different things. First of all, they need to hit more quickly their passes to Blair and to Gibbler. They need to throw the ball a little bit more, but also try to attack the outside perimeter. They haven't done that in this ball game. Use Bradley's talent. This man is wide open and makes a remarkable catch. Terry Hill. Absolutely model athletic instincts, recognized that he was in a danger zone, planted both feet, fell across the sideline. Bradley got away from the pressure by Casey Moore. Use Bradley's talents. Watch this. He just breaks out of the pressure. Now watch him. Terry Hill's going to be sidestepping right on the sidelines. He knows he's in the danger zone, just like Jimmy said. Watch this. Oh. Just as beautiful. You can't do that too many times. Perfectly executed throw and catch. Big play, move the football down to the 15-yard line. Wilder gets it down to the two. Marcus McKinney made the saving tackle. For one of the first times all day, Wilder was...
was able to break out. Oh, I've been wanting him to go outside. That's what you've got to do. They, oh, not, that's where their strength is. Missouri's got speed. Use it and get outside. This time, Walder breaks the outside, takes on a good tackle by Billy uh, McKinney, number 34. And after the play, Wilder came off to the side, so they operate without him now on second down from the two. But Terry Hill scores. For two to try to get within a field goal of tying it up. Again, they place the ball on the left hash mark. This time, they don't go with three wide receivers, rather with double tight ends. Bradley looks over the middle, throws, and it is caught. Big catch in the end zone by the backup tight end number 80, Tim Hornoff. A senior from now as Brockhouse prepares to kick off, Purdue has placed nine backs and receivers close to the 50-yard line to avert the onside kick. So Brockhouse kicks it deep, and number 21, Jimmy Smith, will bring it back. And Smith is dumped right at the 20-yard line. Number 31 down there like a wild man was reserved to it back Chip Powell and the Boilermakers will now try to protect their three-point lead with under five minutes to go and 80 yards of grass in front of them. Dragged down from behind by Randy Jostis, number 99. Steve Davis, I don't think that Purdue can afford to shut things down here and keep it on the ground. They've not moved it on the ground in this half the way they did in the first half. But before we talk about that, here are the numbers on two outstanding senior quarterbacks playing their last games in Missouri and Purdue uniforms. Outstanding quarterbacks. They both had great days. Your point, I think, is true, Jimmy. I don't think they can because I think Missouri is going to play tough defense on the line now. And they don't. And Herman throws to Steve Bryant. And Bryant, who was injured earlier and went out of the game, has now come back to make a big catch. Out to the 34-yard line, a 14-yard pickup. I think Purdue's got to say, if you live by it, you're going to die by it. So they're going to Steve Bryant, their flanker back. He's had a big day today. Just easy spot, curl inside. Good for a first and 10. Herman has started to put a little bit more on the ball in this half than I've seen him in previous games. Sometimes he doesn't throw with a lot of muscle. But Part of it is that Missouri's playing a little bit tougher defensively. They're starting to crowd the receivers a little bit more. On first down, it is Ben McCall. And McCall is dragged down by number 34, Lester Dickey, who penetrated and made a good tackle at ankle level. Rushing yards in the game. Purdue with 86 yards to go. And they must get the ball to their 44 for first down. 324 left. Macon hit by Wendell Ray and Van Darko and dropped a yard or two short of the first down. Third down now, call it a short two or a long one. Another critical call for Jim Young and for Mark Herman. And it would be interesting to know at this point if Herman is calling his own plays, he is. Yes, no shuttle. Watch some sort of drag route across the middle. Or watch Ben McCall as he breaks down the sideline and tries to get away from Kevin Hart. He's knocked out of bounds inside the 30 at the 27-yard line. But a senior running back, Ben McCall, who's played in the shadows of other more talented players throughout his career, got a chance to start today and has done it. I probably was thinking like Missouri, because that's what happened. He's just a quick hitter by McCall breaks the outside Missouri's thinking they've got to start stop, stop something inside and all of a sudden McCall just hits him on the quick hitter breaks it down the sideline 30 yard pickup on third down and one big block by John Macon number 37 on the play now inside three minutes and on first down Macon protects the football inside the 25 to the 24 yard line Wendell Ray made the stop for Missouri and now the Tigers will use in our studio in Washington. <laughs> Daryl wouldn't mind. Second down. This time I would have to believe Steve Davis they will go to the air. But perhaps not this deep in Missouri territory. Lynch. Herman is done. 
Devin Potter, number 18. The strong safety was coming all the way, and there was no one in front of him. The timeout was well used because they made the right defense or created the right situation. Look at Potter. He's just a blot, kind of a blur in there and really spins Herman around. They were in a man-to-man -man coverage, and they were really coming. Everybody's coming. Watch this. From the outside, you'll see Potter. There he is, 18, and he hones in on Mark Herman. He says, you're not going to throw it this time. Big defensive play for Missouri. Gives him so a chance. Missouri defensive coordinator Carl Reese guessed right that time along with Warren Powers. And Purdue will now accept a delay of game penalty as they allow the clock to run. You see the time remaining. This will be the equivalent of a minute and 15 seconds that Purdue has taken off the clock by just gobbling up the 25-second clock completely. Very canny football. And, of course, we gave Jim Young credit for a smart strategic move with the intentional safety. But in retrospect, the intentional safety combined with the two-point extra point by Missouri after Terry Hill's touchdown has given Missouri a shot at a possible tie with a field goal. I think the safety was good because at that time, Purdue felt confident about what they were doing, and they felt like they would probably get a hard rush. Obviously, Missouri would have a chance to block the kick, give them a touchdown and momentum. I think it was a good call. Right now, he may be having some doubts about it, but I think it was at that time of the ball game and the progress of the game, it was a good call. The other effect of the delay of game penalty was to give Boche more room between himself and the goal line for this punt, and that paid off. As you see Purdue downing the punt at about the five-yard line, Tim Sennett was the man who stopped it as it bounced backward, and they'll mark it at the six. Football takes crazy bounces. It just really nails it right there. It just hits and bounces right up into his hands. And again, give Jim Young credit for a smart move with the intentional delay of game. So now, Missouri gets their last shot. Bill Bradley in command. Ball at the six. Fellows and Blair to the far side of the screen. Bradley throws back across the middle intended for Fellows, and it's too high. Warren Powers calling the play. He'll send freshman running back George Shorthose on. I'd like to thank statistician Jim Ritz, sensational all year, able to leave his family at holiday time to help me out, along with spotter Mike Swanson, along with everyone else on this telecast crew. Bradley, back across the middle, out of the hands of Andy Gibbler, and now they have only two more chances. Third down, 10 from the six-yard line. It is a terribly frustrating situation to be back in the end zone, just like this, throwing from it. Gibbler, he hits him a little bit outside. It was almost a catchable football, but now your chances begin to get close to slim and none. They need to pick up a first and 10, stop the clock, rethink their thoughts. Again, it was intended for Andy Gibbler, and you see the two Purdue linebackers, Marks and Looney, rejoicing. And here it is. The last shot. Fourth down, 10 yards to go. One minute on the clock. 94 yards between Missouri and victory in the Liberty Bowl. This play only between Purdue and a victory. tried to go to the tight end underneath three straight times they were unable to connect touchdown here. Missouri has no capacity to stop the clock as it runs with 40 seconds left. Dickey and Sally made the stop on that play and the 
Tigers try to keep it at 20-25 rather than letting it go to 34-25. If you've enjoyed the show that Herman and Bradley have put on today, I remind you that they will both be appearing in the Hula Bowl on ABC Sports coming up January 10th. Wide World of Sports, we remind you, immediately follows after the conclusion of this game everywhere except on the West Coast. And Young has told his players he wants no more points on the board. This will do it. So Purdue winds up 9-3. and three. Missouri drops to 8-4. and four. quarterback Mark Herman against a very good Missouri team, 28-25, a victory for the Boilermakers. Coming up next on Wide World of Sports, United States figure skaters in the People's Republic of China, a very special performance everywhere except on the West Coast. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. That's what Friendly Skies are all about. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. Once again, the final score for Purdue 28, Missouri 25.